Hi all. Today we're going to explain how to do tracking in simple terms. Um, tracking can be quite difficult if you're not sure exactly what you're doing or how it actually works. So today I'm going to explain how simple it is and how easy it is to, to do the basics of tracking. That way when you do more complex stuff you'll understand the fundamentals behind it and it'll be easy for you to work out what you need to do. So what tracking basically is, tracking is just sticking an object to your footage. So if you have footage that's moving, or even if you have something, say, say you're filming something with camera shake um, and you want your actor to have a blood stain on their shirt that you forgot to do in filming or you want a bullet hole in somebody or something like that and they're moving around, you either would A, animate that frame by frame, that image on top of their body frame by frame, or you would track it. And tracking, tracking is much easier because it sticks your image or object or text even to your footage. I'll explain this as we go along. So first of all open up a, a comp of what you need to do and put your footage in the timeline. And this is me doing a, another tutorial but it'll give you an idea of, uh, of um, how this is done and also how good looking I am. No, just kidding. Alright, so basically if you look at my body here, as you, as you watch the footage, it's a 20 second clip. I'm filming on the tripod, that's fine. So you generally wouldn't use tracking if you want to stick anything to the footage that isn't moving besides me. So if you want to put a bullet hole on the wall here, you could just put a bullet hole because your footage isn't moving. But if you wanted a blood stain, say here, for instance, um, as you can see, I'm moving all over the place. Okay. So what you need to do is you create a new object. So you go layer, new, null object. And press enter when that appears and call it tracking data one. Okay, that's where your, your, all your data or data from your tracking is going to sit, as you can see by that red box there. That red box isn't going to stay there, that's just where all the information will be. So what you do now is you'll open up your tracker module. Now you can do that via, if it's not on the right hand side here, so where it says tracker, you can go up to your window here and tick the tracker box that will appear on the side here. Okay, if you're not sure, if it's not there for some reason. So what you do is you select your original footage and select track motion. Now there's position and rotation you can do tracking of, which will give you two of these tracking points, but for the the simplest of this, because I'm basically facing forward, we'll just use this one to show you what the difference of tracking makes compared to uh, can, if you were trying to animate it yourself. Okay, now the outside box of this is secondary information and the inside box is primary information. So the bigger you make these boxes, the bigger the tracking area will be. And the whole good thing about that is if you want to track a whole area, that's fine, but if you want to track specific things, if you make them quite large, uh, it'll still track on most cases, but what will happen is that it'll take forever for your computer to, to do it because it's such a, so much information. So for right now we're going to track the end here on the footage. So you, you just basically hold left click on this and put the X, as you can see, on the end. Now I just want to do the end, so I'm just going to do it slightly bigger than the end, and I'm just going to go slightly bigger here. If I went out here like this, if my arms got in the way of the footage or anything like that, they, as I move them, they would move the tracking points and make a mess of it. So you want to keep it as small as you possibly can in most cases. Now all you need to do now, if you then the right hand side here, is a button here that says analyze forward. So you analyze that forward for the whole of your footage that you want to track. Like so. And as you can see, it's following the end as we're talking, or as I'm talking on the screen. There's nothing in a way to interfere with it, so it's tracking it fairly well. Because as you're watching it, as you see, it's not moving off the, the end, so you'd say to yourself, that's a pretty good track. So then you would do apply down here. If you click apply, you click apply to X and Y. Now you do OK, sometimes you might get a box that comes up and says edit target, or oh, sorry, it says target. You make sure that you select tracking data one as your target. Okay, now I didn't have that because it knows to do that already, but it'll say where would you like this to go? You, you select, in the drop down box, you select tracking data one. Okay, so now when you look at that tracking data, the null object now has all that footage in that, in that red square. Nothing's changed as far as the footage goes. But if you wanted to put a blood splat there or something like that, let's bring one in. Here is my blood splatter. Go to the start of your footage, for instance. Um, 
And as you can see, this is the animated blood splatter. So what I want is I want, say, that splatter there. So I'll just right click on the footage and go time, freeze frame. And that will just freeze that frame for the whole of that footage, as you can see. Okay. Now it's too large, so we'll drop that down to, uh, sorry, what am I doing? It's too large. So what we'll do is we'll drop it down to scale of, say, 25% in this case. And I'm going to put that on the end because that's where I want the splatter to be. Now, if you were to just leave it there and render your footage out, this is what it would look like. It would move around like this and look really, really average. Okay. So what I need to do is I want that to stick to my footage. And how you do that... On the right hand side here is a little thing called a pick whip. Now you can pull that and point that, stick that to whatever you want. But if that isn't there, just hit the toggle switches bottom down, the button down the bottom here and that should pop out in case it isn't there. So click on the image you want to stick to your footage, grab your pick whip and apply it to tracking data. Now if you watch this now and I press play, you'll see that it's actually stuck to my body and it moves naturally with my body. Now if I rotate, rotate it too much, that image would stay as two-dimensional and I would move in three dimensions theoretically so it wouldn't look any good so you would do the rotation um, of that as well but this gives you an idea of just how good it can look just by sticking something to a piece of footage. Now you can do that with anything. You've got uh, you know, you've got the blood splatter there we can add another thing to that we can say let's have a text tool so we can write a bit of text along here so I'll just write um, awesome guy for instance now I can apply that, I can move that where I want it first, so I can say that's this is me here, and I can uh, I can pick whip that to the same tracking data, so when you press play, it'll move along that as well. This is great if you want uh, captions to you know, like, um, if you want credits to be on the walls or moving objects or ca cars passing by, things like that. They always look quite good, and you can do this with anything. You can put a knife sticking out of there. I can do anything I want. So this gives you an idea of, uh, of how good this can look and how easy this is. So as I said before, the simple thing is, as long as you get your tracking data right, you can pretty much stick anything to anything and make it look more realistic than it would be if you tried to animate it yourself. In the next tutorial, we'll look at um, using two points for tracking, but for now, we'll just leave it at one. It just gives you an idea of... Uh, of how easy this is and also hopefully it explains the fundamentals of tracking and what it does for you. Thanks. Till next time. See ya.